Hello, everybody. So I guess we can we can get started. Uh, so I will I will first go quickly through all the questions so we know what is in the agenda, and then I go back and we can spend as much time as we can on what we care most. So well, we can start right away with this one. Uh, we know that several vendors who do uh, accelerators have tried to to upstream their own drivers and. For, for different reasons, I guess, they didn't, didn't, didn't manage. They normally stop quite early in the, in the process. There's in the slide some examples, but there's, there's, there's more actually, which reach the, the mailing list, and how many there are who we don't know about because they didn't go out of the company. We just don't know, but people are having trouble, but there's interest, so that's really something. How can we help them? Um, are these a technical problems, community, or is it just about uh, internal company matters, lawyers, patents, that kind of stuff? I don't know. OK, so this may be a big one. I don't know how much can we do from the kernel side, but well. Uh, this is quite important. G uh, GPU drivers uh, have that, and that plays quite a, a big role in how, how the kernel drivers are uh, maintained, because if we have a common uh, user space API, we can have common expectations from the, from the, from the, from the drivers. Uh, we have that for, for, uh, for the graphics. We have that for OpenCL. For uh, a computer in general, we don't have that for machine learning yet. Uh, but well, there's, there's some um, uh, consolidation going on very slowly and the divergence as well is still on APIs, frameworks, more likely. And there's some attempts on some APIs. We, we can talk about that if anybody has more uh, information on this. And maybe we can, we can help with that. Because if, if there's no open source drivers, then the community can do less at the higher level with the uh, APIs as well. There's, there's less incentive to do that. Automatic testing, well, everybody's talking about that at these plumbers. Uh, maybe we should as well benefit from that. And this is pretty much related to the, to the uh, uh, user space API, I think, because for the graphics uh, people, they have this API so they can use the test suites for the conformance of the drivers to make sure that they don't stop uh, conforming. Uh, if we had that, we could as well do something similar. We don't have that API yet. We we will have to do something else, I guess, for now. Um, user space. So I'm the author of two drivers, and both of them have the user space portion in EMISA, and I try to, to reuse as much as possible from uh, what is already there. The other drivers in, in mainline don't use MISA. Each of them have their own completely different uh, uh, user space. I guess they will have uh, different approaches to the common challenges that the MPU drivers uh, find. Uh, maybe it would be good to, to have some consolidation at some point on this. Uh, I have plans to work on more drivers, and uh, I will be doing those in, in MISA. So. Yes, sorry, uh, before. Um, uh, there's this uh, virtualization thing. They have been some, some uh, research attempts and fixing that with Virtai or something. Uh, well, we, we, can, we can talk about that if anybody has, has thought about this uh, before, but I see two approaches. One is that from the, from the DM, uh, you lower everything and you submit the separate operations to the, um, to the host, and then that's accelerated on the actual hardware, or you send the whole model, but then the host has to, has to figure out with the resources it has, and then probably if it offloads to the GPU, then it won't be using Virtio and GPU anymore, so you lose some, uh, some um, uh, abstraction from the guest into the host, and then as well for the CPU. Uh, the, it could be running on the guest, but if you send the whole graph, then it will be running on the, on the, on the host, so there's some uh, downsides there. Let's see what, what ends up happening here. And there's, there's, there's tooling in general. Most importantly for me is uh, Perfetto. We use that on graphics drivers. You, probably people haven't seen this. Uh, before, but you have a, a timeline and you have boxes that uh, tell you what is happening in different places in the system, what, uh, what uh, resources are being used, um, maybe blocking, 
how long the staff is uh, taking. We can have some assistance from the from the hardware. We normally have uh, a way of figuring out timestamps for different phases going on in the hardware. And well, we we'll, we'll can also uh, check uh, memory usage and other other things like interrupts. Firmware mediated IP. So some of these MPUs, all of them have some front end that process the ring buffers or the command stream, and and some. In some of them, that's made on a silicon, and some of them, there's there's firmware doing that, and then afterwards write the registers on the actual dif on the different components, which are not accessible from the CPU side. Uh, there's there's quite a few of them. Some are uh, have a, a DSP. Some of them have co cores, like for example Cortex M. Uh, they uh, most commonly what I have seen is that they use OpenAMP. For that, with virtual queues for the communication between the CPU and the the, the, the accelerator, and I, I have seen that maybe we can reuse something based on Zephyr. Anything else? Uh, reuse uh, open AM Most importantly, we'll see. Maybe even some some common uh, messages for the common functionality, memory uh, uh, management, for example. And yeah, so. Could be interesting. Now, another question that was proposed on the mailing list was about interoperability with uh, GPUs, more sp but I expanded it a bit more here in case there's, there's other ideas about oh, this, this whole uh, problematic. Uh, it can be about interoperability within a single pipeline. You have a lot of stuff, camera, GPU, painter, uh, some compute maybe for something else, which, 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 which is not a machine learning, then machine learning stuff with the MPUs, and then maybe we want, we want to compress that and send that across the network, uh, compressed already. Uh, but there's, there's another aspect uh, to this, which is that uh, when accelerating the execution of a graph, uh, you, can, you can see, you normally will want to use the accelerator if you can, but accelerator is fixed function, so a lot of stuff cannot be run there, so you can fall back somewhere else. CPU is there, GPU as well, depends on the use case, uh, maybe. Maybe there's some challenges that people have found with the other drivers. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, right now just focusing on those models that can purely be run on the accelerator, but I will have to get as well to some uh, offloading. Uh, I, know, I know that there's something uh, that's bothering um, people, even, even the, 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 the closed source drivers apparently haven't uh, fix this, and this issue is that um, you normally have more than one core, and you can try to split one big operation and run that uh, concurrently in, in, in different cores. That's normally not very efficient because normally, because it's the same operation, they have to access the sa either the same weights or the same input data. So you will have to copy those to be accessible to internal memory of each individual core. Um, so normally what is more efficient is to run different models in each core. And normally, nowadays, these systems will have different models doing different kind of stuff. And the thing is that uh, how, do you, how do you allow user space to say, I want to run on this core, reserve it for me uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a safe way? Because uh, one model might be more, um, have a higher priority and the other one might be an uh, unchecked and, and the vetoed uh, application even. That, that can be a security risk. There's, there have been proposals of solving this with uh, C groups, which have some security around that for uh, setting a mask of uh, cores like we can with uh, CPUs. That's not merged yet. So, and then as well to limit internal memory. Normally these cores have SRAM in there, some, some kind of faster uh, memory. Uh, maybe we, are, we don't want for a lower priority application to use all the internal memory of faster one and slow down the more important one. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a common thing which has been proposed for uh, GPUs and we would also like to use that maybe through the GPU scheduler. I'm quite happy with how I'm using it in my drivers, but maybe people have, some, uh, have found some limits on this. Uh, memory management, DMA buff, because of the interoperability thing, we'll be sharing uh, buffers with, with the different uh, components in the pipeline and then synchronization. There's, there's always interesting stuff there as well, as well for uh, pipelines, mostly. And, uh, yeah. 
and that's that. So I'm going back. Um, let's see what interests people the most. So anybody has an insight on why we are not seeing more drivers being merged in mainline? Not here. <laughs> it's not the biggest problem to solve for yet. Everybody's trying to figure out what to do with the software. It's like interoperability isn't isn't the biggest biggest pain so far. And I also think it's if you look at what's happening in GPU and what's driving a lot of consolidation there is that it's actually in consumer hardware, and users want to be able to use you know hardware more generically. And a lot of these are still special purpose or more on embedded where they're used to doing custom builds and all that. So I think it's, it's probably on a lot of vendors list, but it's not, it's not in the top, you know, three or five or maybe even 10. Being a mainline. Being in a shared code base, we shared infrastructure with others in mainline or elsewhere. It's also, um, and I, I guess this might be a hot take, I don't know if it is, um, but being in the DRM subsystem, you're certainly not making your own life easy when it comes to backporting to older kernels and stuff like that because of the refactoring activity there, and it's hard to just backport a driver. Yeah, I think uh, GPU vendors as well had to had to get past that. Just put on the um, from the, like I, I started seeing have you any seen anything about what the Intel and AMD because they are now going to be in consumer devices the. Intel what, Meteor Lake has a, the VPU, I think the AMD Ryzen AI has some Xilinx based core or something. I'm not really too up on it, but like their user space stacks are a horrible nightmare that you could never ship. I think the I think the AMD one, I keep forgetting the name, but there's some license manager used to deal with in Solaris like 20 years ago. And when you install their Flex LM, Flex -LM. Oh, no. it's still, <laughs> their, uh, their SDK has FlexLM license manager errors when you install it on Windows. It's that like code base that they've been bringing along for 20 years type situation. Uh, yeah, and I, I think there might be a bit of leverage on the consumer side now that they're actually coming into products. It's like, yeah, we, we, we should like maybe that, try and bring that closer to this as well with the, on the ARM side and seeing if there is a bit a common space that we can you know, drive those vendors towards. User expectations. Yeah, because they have more user expectations. They actually want to use these devices for something. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know about the cloud and, and the desktop or uh, something in the middle. But on, on ARM, people are using it, and they are being beaten by the cost of drivers. And they have been asking that, because that's something that they did for the GPUs, for the codecs, et cetera. And then now they have the MPUs. They want to use them, and they feel that they are back to seven years ago. <laughs> What's your feeling on the user space side from like, I know you've done the TensorFlow Lite API, but you know, it, it, is there a, a common adapter where you could make it like, you know, to like get the basics of like PyTorch and TensorFlow Lite? And yeah, yeah, so, so I, I started with the TensorFlow Lite just because that's what the users of the MPUs that I was going to attack first were using, were asking for. And, and then uh, I know that uh, PyTorch has made several attempts and having some way of delegating that to accelerators. And the latest is ExecTorch. And that allows for an external adapter because that's needed because uh, I cannot put the same uh, user space driver into each uh, framework. And I cannot either expose an unstable API from Mesa so that I interact with that, right? So, so well, I, I can only really support uh, frameworks which have some external stable API that I can plug into. And Executorch has that now, so I want to look at it uh, further. Uh, it's, it's via Python, which is exposed. <laughs> exactly how I will be doing that in Mesa, but I think it, it will be uh, doable. Wenenix, it's a Linux Foundation project with, uh, with uh, governance and so on, but I was told that someone inside Microsoft has a team looking into that. We'll see what ends up from there. And what else? Well, there's, besides those frameworks, there's those attempts at having a common API for different uh, frameworks like OpenXLA. Uh, that's more specific to, to, uh, to companies or frameworks, but there's the MLIR, which is kind of a component that could fit into that. 
which is cool, but it's uh, generic enough so that people can agree, but it allows for so much flexibility that there is not a single MLIR. They are a dialects, and can, everybody can do whatever they, they, they want. Up to some point, that's also true for SPIRV, and, and we did it, right? With SPIRV to ONIA, we support different flavors. Maybe we can have as well an MLIR to NIR in, inside MESA. Uh, maybe, yeah. So it's still a bit early, but I think uh, we understand each other's needs, and there's several ideas, and every company is doing their own thing, but we in the kernel, I think, because we are used to work from different companies uh, together, maybe we can help kernel and MESA. That's it. So there was some question. Yeah. Uh, question uh, slash comment. So speaking as a reviewer for some of the Qualcomm patches, uh, they did a good thing on the one of the family of accelerators by bringing it in and having the really open user space but for another family of uh, devices, well, th this is not strictly a ML, but just more of the accelerator, more of the DSP present on the other side. Uh, we are currently being bitten by the lack of the user space, uh, which, yeah, which they think about providing, but th this will be a long path. And at the same time, uh, we are slightly struck uh, because, yeah, there is the DRAMXL API, but it's not really clear and it is not that obvious compared to the GPU side how to how to use it, what we can propose, what we should be enforcing. So if, if, if there is something more generic, if there should be a generic kernel API uh, for the accelerators, so there, there, if there should be, what are the guidelines for using DRM Excel? So. Yeah, I would personally go with the same we have in the DRM the subsystem. I don't see it any different. Yeah, I, 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 I I think if you were in the camera talking, you know, the answer to this, they, they, there is no great guidelines. It's like uh, we want people to approach with what they want, and we will then discuss with them what, whether that will fit within the model. There is the, the reason we accept, one of the reasons we separated Excel from DRM was to give that space for someone to grow in because, yeah, we don't know. And I can't tell you, and, and you'll probably come with something and I'll go, that's not it. And then you'll try again. We go, oh, that looks more like it. You know, it's going to be one of those conversations. I don't think we can decide. I think the DRM model works quite well for these devices because at least these ones, most of them seem to look like the GPUs looked exactly the same. Like they often put a queue in front of them. They often model pretty much the same. So, I, I, I think I, I don't think there's enough commonality at the command submission stage. Or really, uh, maybe there is, but it may, it may depend on whether they're firmware programmed or not. So there isn't. But if you have a firmware and it's common, then we can agree on something yeah. there. But yeah, so it, maybe, yeah, we have to just get it, get two or three of them and see. But yeah, and it'll be one of those cases again where we do the first one and then we'll be like, oh, well, they got away with a lot. The second guy won't get away with as much and the third one will probably try and force it into a more of a better model and iterate from there. Because I don't think it's very hard to do an abstract and say we can come up with the answer. So I'm, I'm sort of happy to let the Excel have a bit of leeway and not be as quite as stuck. I still have the user space, you know, stack requirement, but I'm not as, like with GPU, it has to be Mesa. With Excel, I'm like, eh, we can go a bit further. You know, it's a, it's it's a flexible. But yeah, I can't give rules because, as I say, every time I give a rule, someone games it. So <laughs> it's 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 up to the community. It's up to try and get the people together and talk about it and figure it out. So. Yeah. It's a bit early, but I, I I hope we'll get there eventually. Yeah. But is is if if we if we have a way to uh, support different frameworks, then we'll we'll also have a way to support one API that may be the, the, the one actually, and if instead of Bane, we'll have been supporting it from the start already, so we'll have help for it to become the standard as well. Maybe not that many platform. I think so far there's too many, when we're talking about the GPU or the accelerator here, there's too many user cases here today. One is still the, the existed, uh, the, the graphic part like the DRM that we are already using, Mesa. But the, the also the other there, there's like, a, we, we talked here, the PyTorch Tensor, this kind of machine learning kind of a fl platform. Their user case is quite different. For, I am not quite familiar with the graphic part, but for the machine learning part, they are more like focused on the, the memory, like because all these devices has a big memory. So like uh, maybe we can come to a platform like, a, more towards to, to the machine learning kind of a, uh, compatibility? Mm, yeah, uh, so I, I haven't felt 
the need for anything drastically different in MISA for the accelerators I have supported. Maybe that <coughs> won't be the case for Penstorin, maybe. I can imagine it's being, it, it being very different. But it's basically, I mean, modern uh, GPUs are really close to what the MPUs that we are seeing today are, especially if they have a programmable core, like some of them have, it can be a DSP, it can be some IP which was used in GPUs actually, and the IP vendor then reused that for their own MPU. It's very similar. I, yeah, I, yes, they, they I mean, were. That's why I thought like, uh, also another reason I, I bring it here is like, uh, there are so many vendors here, especially this uh, machine learning trend here, more and more there. But on the other hand, like, do we really want them all? Because even for the vendor themselves, you, you can see they are not consistent that either. Some like uh, generation one, and maybe there are no generation two. Or when it comes to generation two, the hardware design is already totally different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what, what happened, I mean, it's, it's everything new, so, so we are seeing a lot of uh, movement. What happened was that SOC vendors wanted to have uh, accelerators because of the hype. They had to uh, check that box that marketing people gave them. And they didn't have anything, so they went to the, to the existing IP providers that they worked with, and they quickly hired something. Sometimes it was based on some a DSP that they already had. They just bolted some multiplication uh, units next to it. Maybe they were selling a GPU IP, so they took their uh, cores, they removed the graphics uh, stuff, and then added some matrix uh, multiplication to the site. And, and there might be as well some other cases like uh, ARM with the Cortex-M. Again, they took a core and then put that. And the thing is that I think, uh, well, it's a bit on the, on the record. I think that they were trying to screw up the customers because they, it must have been very expensive because uh, as soon as possible in the next version of the SOCs, they started using their own IPs. Yeah. And, but also uh, there was a, a lot of trying to lock those uh, customers in by using a, a closed source stack, which is not just the OpenGL driver. They also have components on top of that because there's, not, there's no sta uh, standard API and then other boxes on top of that. Uh, now the thing is that the SOC vendors are trying to do the same. They also have, of course, binary drivers, but they also have to put, uh, uh, try putting a lot of other blocks that the customers are used to invest and use, and then it's, it's much harder for them to move to some other vendor, right? Uh, but that's, that's kind of uh, what happened. Uh, but actually the hardware that I'm seeing that people are using the newer mm -hmm. SOCs is the same idea. The, once I reverse engineer it and saw how it's done, I don't see fundamental differences, and I have the impression that they just reached a plateau, at least on the, on the embedded, on the edge, and so on. And they, they, they are just there, and I don't really know what, what will happen. There's some interesting stuff like um, uh, totally different ways of running these networks, but I don't know if it's practical at all. I haven't seen any, any real use yet. We'll see what happens. Okay. Thanks. I wonder if you can say a little bit more about your thoughts on the firmware mediated IP stuff because the, I mean, I think that's also a, a, a area that might be easier to explore in the early stage. Um, and also the, the analog with what's happened in the audio subsystem, right? You see a lot of the, the sound open firmware type of approach. So if you, I'm curious if you have any thoughts of like, or rough sketches of what you think that firmware interface might look like kind of in the, yeah, kind so of like what happened in sound open firmware. So uh, lately I have been looking at ARMS. Uh, ARMS MPU is, is great how they uh, have uh, great open doc docs about it. They have an uh, open source kernel driver, which is not in mainline, and they also have an open source uh, user space stack one can look at. And, and then there's, there's firmware. It's not that they have it open sourced because I think it's not what actually companies are, are running. They normally uh, give blobs to the customers, uh, but 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 ARM has a, has a, an example of how you would be doing such a such a framework which works with the with the kernel that they they, they actually have there, <coughs> and it's using OpenAMP. It's very similar to what you uh, what uh, uh, by Libre submitted once for uh, MediaTek. I think it's in this slide, and I. 
I think it's fine. I, I really like that. And then we could move uh, the dealing with the differences in the command stream uh, submission within the framework and then the kernel driver, I won't say can be the same, but then I guess the differences will be up to um, what kind of memory is, is used to interact with the device, if it's, uh, uh, what kind of coherence is there and so on. And the rest uh, will be really, really similar, but probably, Probably we won't have a single kernel driver for different MPUs and abstract everything inside the framework. That might not be that practical because uh, we wouldn't be sharing that much code because in the DRM subsystem, the framework gives you all that already. So you, you will be just gluing different parts and not really implementing any of it. Uh, but but I, th I think what, what you did matches what I would like to see for supporting different firmware-mediated uh, IPs. Yeah, I'm not sure, uh, you know, how many of us have been working with multimedia before, you know, before they have, uh, you know, this thing called OpenMax, actually, the Kodak, you know, video Kodak, encoder, all these things are totally a mess from different SOC vendors, right? And uh, then I think, well, after Android, actually take OpenMax, actually, you know, it's a spec, you know, set of things like, you know, how you, what kind of uh, hardware uh, block diagram you should have and, uh, you know, the boundary of the SOC, you know, to, you know, the interfaces to the middleware and from the middleware to the upper layer, right? So uh, a lot of like APIs of, of like enumeration, buffer management, you know, enumeration, all these kind of thing, like workload submission. I was thinking maybe we can actually try to, you know, leverage some uh, experience from them. Because, you know, I think for the vendors, they don't have the requirement, like, I don't want, I want something to be unique, right? But I think for us, if we, uh, you know, trying to take a look at that, maybe, well, if there's opportunity, we can also talk to Kronos, like, okay, maybe based on OpenMax, can we, you know, have something similar things for ML. I would just say that would be much more helpful because it did solve problem. We have the successful case here, but I mean, it's not solved all the problem, but uh, it solves a lot, I would just say. If you check the Android code nowadays, I would just say, yeah. So that's something from my comments. Okay, so maybe maybe the Android people um, formalized a bit further the OpenMax uh, uh, spec, because I, I remember working with it that uh, different implementations, they were uh, conformant, but each uh, behaved so well differently that your application had to, had to know what hardware it was talking about. So it wasn't really abstraction, it was a, a leaky abstraction. Yeah. Uh, so I guess Android did something similar to OpenGLDS, in which they added some, some uh, restrictions and they added a, a test suite, a conformance on top yeah, of the Kronos. Yeah, yeah, correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I think OpenMax is, uh, is, is doing more than OpenGLES, I would just say. It has a spec even like for your hardware type, you know, uh, what kind of hardware type uh, diagram you should have and the enumeration interface you should yeah. have, so. Well. I haven't seen that much complexity in oh. your <laughs> Okay, uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the complexity on OpenMax was as well because it tried to show a, a pipeline in which there would be different components. Yeah, yeah, correct. In this case, we all, all only have one component. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Uh, I really hope we won't need all the complexity on OpenMax. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Uh, but yes, uh, for sure, working with Kronos, I mean, I guess they have already been thinking about that, but I think they are a bit stuck because they they have to cater for the needs of their members and each of them want to do something else and they have been a, a strong appetite for vendor locking which goes completely against interoperability standards, right? So, but if we have some uh, open source drivers in mainland, people are using it at different companies, even if we don't have yet that um, common API but we support uh, frameworks, it will be much easier for Kronos to make the point for, hey, your vendor lock-in is not going to be there anyway, so let's work together and get to a, 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 a different phase. So in order to pull in vendors and other manufacturers to actually utilize mainline, there needs to be an incentive somewhere, as in we need to make the mainline interface provide some functionality, some utility and hooks into user space that make them want to actually use it so they don't need to develop their own stack and components there. So 
if we really want something, there needs to be not only a standard, but also hooks into the existing user space components that have already been developed. Yeah, making, making use of those in uh, MISA, uh, there's, there's, there's those um, IOTs which are specific to each um, driver which are related to the, to the command stream, but the other ones, but yeah, but it, it's not really that that much, to be honest, because there isn't really that much functionality that gets exposed. I mean, it's, this, is, this is really simple hardware. <laughs> there isn't really that much there. Uh, but in, in any case, in my experience, uh, we do not need to convince the developers or the engineers at those companies. Those people are, really, are able to understand why it's better from a technical perspective. It's just a matter of getting the marketing people, yeah. this, this the fan, and the and the politics uh, running to them. Because what I'm seeing is that the software managers they feel that they are losing power if they have a mainland-based solution because they are not uh, gatekeepers anymore. People can go directly to mainland and send patches, right? But I also think they're not going to go with DRM. Well, if you write the drivers, I, I, I actually, it's already Yeah, the, I think DRM. in this space, the kernel is not the yeah. motivator here. We, the kernel is a minor part of the interface to yeah. these type of devices, and the same in DRM. The motivator is providing them with some sort of user space framework that they can trivially plug into and they don't have to worry about. And I'm, like things like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit all over place what's needed in user space, like, yo, know, what is there space for like a common graph compiler? What should we do? Can we pull one DNN out of the one API solution and build that as our common graph compiler? Can we take pieces, that, all this code's out there. Is there an ability to build enough pieces? Like we, I've got someone working on this at Red Hat at the moment, looking at like trying to pull one DNN out, trying to see if Sickle can be used, trying to see if there's a way to, you know, just get the pieces that are already existing that are in vendor stacks and impossible to use now, but if we could go, we just take that piece from Intel and we use this piece from like adaptive CPP or we do, and trying to build that framework in user space, we have a common thing and then they just go, oh, all I have to do now is plug in a, like a list of operations or, you know, and then it's easier. I think that'll drive it more than the kernel. The kernel is not that interesting for this. Yeah, I think we can, we can um, give them the, the same tools that are use, useful for the GPU drivers they are also useful for the MPUs yeah. and so on. And I, I think the analogy to what Android did with OpenMux is a good one, because OpenMux was kind of an abstract concept and a pile of wishes and ideas, um, some of which never ever got implemented. But Android with Stage Fright gave you a very concrete thing to nail down. Um, but where I think it's quite different to, to this is that you know, doing stateful codecs was fairly well understood. Like, in terms of GPUs, you've got GL and Vulkan at the top end, and you've got some hardware at the bottom end. With OpenMax IL and what Android did, you had, you know, H.264 at the top end and a well-defined bitstream and some hardware below that. So it was a pretty well understood transformation. But, you know, we've sort of got, the closest we get to something vaguely common at, at this level is like TensorFlow and, and PyTorch. And like Dave said, the, the kernel has almost nothing to do with it. It's all of that interesting functionality is in user space and how you deal with the graph compiler and translating that down to the ops the hardware understands. But that's completely a, a user space thing. And it's much more sort of wishy-washy than the codec situation was. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. Uh, something interesting, there's, there's a question there. But something interesting uh, about this is that uh, it's, not, it's not just for the accelerator what you want to expose in user space because of some user space functionality that some other component needs, but it's very often what the hardware can actually do. I mean, uh, and what happens is that there's always an opt-in interface so that you can compile to what the accelerator can, and what you cannot, you just uh, bail off. You just say, hey, I cannot, I cannot deal with that. I will be run on the, on the CPU elsewhere. So it's, it's a bit two ways. Uh, so we have more flexibility there. We don't really need to support everything. We, we don't need to compile everything so, so that runs on the accelerator. We can just uh, give up. If uh, I see another limitation uh, for upstreaming stuff, and that is, 
in that particular community, let's say, if we can call community, um, they tend to uh, rely a lot on uh, vendor provided uh, BSPs and they use very outdated components often. And the SDKs are pretty much the same. Uh, so it's a combination of all the stuff and that's why many find hard to upstream stuff. They are working with much older versions and it's a hard sell internally for the engineers to to get things upstreamed. Uh, they, they are fighting against management all the time and if they do go with mainland first, then basically nobody will use their work. I have seen it firsthand that I will port something, it will work much better, and still nobody use it. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's, that's the thing that we see uh, with anything that lands in uh, newer kernels. But, um, but uh, I'm sure that there's some companies which are fine with using vendor BSPs with very ancient components and with no updates and so on that might change with the new European Union re regulations. Mm -hmm. But I, I hear from the companies who actually want to use the newer stuff, want to have updates, uh, security, and, and those are the ones who come to me and say, the, our, our partners are not giving us uh, mainline drivers. Can you help us? And that's, those are probably the people we should care about in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the kernel, not the people who are using uh, uh, a downstream branch of an ancient kernel with an enormous delta, they just dig a hole in, uh, themselves into a hole. It's our job to bring them out if they don't even want. I don't know, there's, there's some uh, uh, devices in which it's not really that important running the latest bits, but those people are not part of our community either. They just don't care about it and that's probably fine. But there's a lot of companies who really need to have MPU drivers in mainline. Those are probably the ones we want to talk with. These kind of changes usually ends up being driven by customers, whether that's a company in between an IP customer and actual end user of an SOC. It, sometimes it's a end users, companies. Yeah, sure. And I'm, I'm really hopeful about this. The industry is very early. Nothing is done together. The whole upstreaming, it's not that people don't want to do it, but or that you necessarily lose power, you lose predictability. You can't, your marketing team needs to ship this SDK in time for the, when the hardware is ready, right? And, and upstreaming timelines are always uncertain, right? So it, it's hard for them to make that call when, it, when it's not a priority, right? When it's not a customer requirement that the driver's upstream. Mm -hmm. We'll get there someday. I, I, like everything is going well. I like that people are frustrated it's not happening fast <coughs> enough. Um, and I'm sure we'll get there. I mean, it's a natural. We've seen a lot of subsystems being cleaned up, and this is the journey they all take. So yeah, it's yeah. good. Um, I think most drivers that have been upstream so far are fairly simple, right? It's a fairly basic offload, maybe matrix multiplication, some more advanced ops. But there haven't been any like highly complex. Like the hardware we have is extremely flexible. It's also not load store based. It's data flow. So like the programming model is, is slightly different for the hardware itself. Um, I guess yeah. Yeah. it remains to be seen how, how those end up fitting in and also into DRM, right? Because everything there tends to be SPDM. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, really see the, the edge getting much complicated any, any, any time soon. They seem to be just... Yeah, it's some, it's some image recognition type workloads and I'm maybe some curious, voice. I'm curious about automotive because they are using some SOCs with similar MPUs to this, I, I mean but they also want to scale further, and I don't know at what level they will get between the desktop and server ones and, and the currently used in the edge. We'll see. But, but yeah, hopefully, I think we'll be able to, to work together on this. It, will, it won't be radically different. Uh, the thing is that I think it's more of a market and maturity thing that the, the, there's a lot of consolidation in terms of features at, on the edge that allows us to also start making, uh, consolidating it at the software level in the kernel and in user space. But for, for those uh, segments in which there's so much innovation everybody's doing in, 
in different ways. Uh, maybe they are making more complicated ways that needed because it's not clear what's needed yet. So we can probably help those less right now, but we have to start uh, somewhere anyway, so. Yep. Um. Any questions for, for internet, actually? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. We still have 15, no, how much time we have? Yeah. Okay, so. Is there anything we haven't covered that maybe somebody You had test suites on one of the slides there. What do you? What is the state of, of test suites for ML for the edge kind of workloads? So, f of course, the, the testing was for me. I was the main user because I needed to move forward and I couldn't be uh, uh, regressing all the time. What I did was creating a test suite in which I have the operations I support in TensorFlow Lite in that case and just uh, uh, with uh, G-Test, it just uh, uh, makes a combinatorial, uh, combina well, combines all these possibly, uh, possible values, and so I have uh, thousands of tests that make sure that I support convolutions with all these different uh, parameters, and I use the infrastructure which is already in MISA for, for running them in parallel, so it, it runs actually fast, and then uh, to run them those on CI. And, but it's it's a specific to TensorFlow Live because we don't have a common uh, user space API. Once I, we once we support PyTorch, we'll have to also do something through PyTorch because the operators will be mm -hmm. a bit different. That's what we have today. Okay. There's a, there's a question here as well. We'll go that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, just for clarification, like you had this list of um, drivers that were sent upstream and then you have some drivers that are upstream. Do all those went via the DRM subsystem and mailing lists and stuff, right? Or is there? A no, uh, in, in many cases they just sent the, the downstream kernel and it was a, a MISC car device in some cases. Okay. In, in, in uh, one case it was uh, an Axel, it was, it was using Moller and stuff actually, because uh, normally you, you see that the out of three um, kernel drivers, they try to be as self-contained as possible, so they don't have to uh, have so many IVE devs, because stuff changes in the internal uh, APIs in the kernel, right? Okay, so, so they, they let it be like that, they didn't try to integrate into the rest, but they just, okay, all right, in okay. Time. fair enough. In most cases, yeah. Then people told them, they saw it was a lot of work, and they stopped sending versions. <laughs> it is soft. <laughs> it's because you mentioned open max. <laughs> <laughs> Targeted. <laughs> One, uh, one thing I haven't seen mentioned, I don't know if you've looked into the ARM tensor operator settings. I can't remember what it's called. Is it Toza oh, yeah, 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 or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were CPU? Yeah. I, I think it's for, uh, you know, it was more generic. The only reason I know about it was, was when the Vul some of the Vulcan internal discussions were brought up. That was the sort of idea was like, oh, let's just take this ARM tensor operator yeah. set and try and see if we can build something off that. But that hasn't gone far. But I was just wondering. If it, it, it seemed like they were trying to make just a standard set of operators that could be used then to build the you know, API. Every, everyone would have to support those operators or something. You mean extending the ISA of the ARM? No, no, this space? was just a, an abstract. Uh, yes, yes, like TOSA. TOSA yeah, right. TOSA, tensor operator set architecture. No, well, it's like MLIR. So yeah, that, well, yeah, is it maybe more like MLIR? Yeah, we need something uh, like that, but the, um, the most important thing will be if everybody uses it, right? So <laughs> people have to agree on that. And well, we can we can help them, I think, by having drivers in the in the kernel and in user space, 
and it would be much easier for them to figure out what could be something that works for more people. Because nowadays, each is working in their own silo, in their own stack, right? So it's much harder for them to find a, a commonality. Maybe we can help them with this. So, no other questions? We covered everything. Oh, you have a last one here. Yeah. If there's anybody here who really likes working on these things and is looking for something, come find me. Um, we're, we're hiring. <laughs> Sure. Oh. Okay. So uh, we can we can just use the rest of the time for whatever else. So thank you everybody.